How about now? Are we good? Can you hear me? I can sure hear you. Oh, good, Denny. <laughs> I'm glad. Are we good? Somebody just say, yeah, Heath, that's what we were doing. We turned it off and turned it back on. Start the broadcaster. Is everybody good? Are we on? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we were just talking about the weather. Oh, how about this weather, Liz? Yeah, this weather is amazing, Tony. It's springtime. It's not 100 degrees yet. Denny went yep. fishing, caught some... Pickerel. Pickerel. Never going to be able to say that. Those are actually uh, mini northern pike. Midget, mm. midget northern pike. Midget northern pike. That is the scientific definition yeah. of a pickerel. Yeah. Is a mini northern pike. A midget. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. Should we say that? A, li a, little, a little person northern pike. It's a little Christy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I have um, once again requested that Denny spearmint with something. Look. Um, I don't know if you're out there, little Chevy guy, but we put your, I put your little spearmint card over on the machine because <laughs> we're spearminting yes, today. This is a spearmint. That's right. For so go. I, um, I mean, chaps are always fun, right? We had a really good like month and a half making all of the chaps and yeah. we had a, a real nice time. Um, but I told Denny, I was like, what about some woolies? I've got a couple shearling panels that I think that we should try to make some woolies and show these people how to make some woolies. And uh, Denny, of course, just agreed. But he didn't, he's going to spearmint with it because he'd never done it before. Yeah. I, I was telling Liz, I've seen lots of them, seen pictures, and uh, seen some in person, but I've never made a set. Yeah, I have a picture of Kevin and this gentleman named Richard, and I don't know his last name, but he's a customer of ours, and every once in a while, he'll wear his woolies in, and I just think they're the funnest things. So, we got a couple, this is Tibetan lamb, oh, and we've sold some, there's a couple of our live shopping customers uh, that are woolly makers. Do you know the purpose, or what the... They're, they're wintertime chefs, okay. what they are. You won't catch many cowboys in Death Valley in the summer. Wearing the, yeah, I know. It doesn't sound yeah. like a good time. Yeah, because they're they're pretty heavy, and the, and the idea is they will keep you warm. Now, originally they were made out of angora. Okay. Because they they didn't uh, import a lot of stuff from Tibet back in the eighteen hundreds. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were no. we weren't on that kick. <laughs> <laughs> but they had angora feet, you know. So that's what they uh, they made these out of. And <clears throat> before we start. Uh, Originally, they either made bat wing uh, woolies mm -hmm. or uh, step in woolies. They Is that, I'm assuming that when the leg does not come apart, yes, and you have to like thread it on like they, a pair of pants. Put them on like a pair of pants. Okay. Yes. But we're going to spearmint and make some shotgun woolies. Okay. Which have a zipper in them. Because back in the 1800s, they didn't have a lot of zippers either. Yeah, I don't imagine yeah. so. But they had snaps and. and Red, yeah, you know, it laced them right up. <laughs> yeah, they laced the ladies into corsets and they laced the men into their chaps and yeah. they called it a day. <laughs> yeah, call it a day. Let's go home. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this let's let's show them this stuff because this is kind of neat. It is very woolly. It's very woolly. So these are Tibetan lamp and these are panels. And the really cool thing, so I think we do get angora skins from time to time. Um, well, we'll have them out on retail. Usually when we do, it's not something that we typically put out on the website. But those are sheep-shaped. Yeah. So they they are sheep-shaped. But these um, are is a pre-made panel. So it's all the fur, but then it's been patched together so that you have a perfect two-foot by eight-foot panel, which I'm assuming, um, especially for maybe the, I can't remember her name, the lady that makes the chaps um, out of it. it. It really... Makes a nice leg because you don't have to worry about the yeah. shape of the critter. Yeah. But actually, it doesn't take a very big piece of this stuff. I don't think. I don't know. We're spearmint here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the way I've got it figured, it's not going to take a huge piece. But anyway. It would be a cool teddy bear, Michael. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's set these aside somewhere here. First, I'm going to make them to fit you, Liz. As usual. Of course. <laughs> so, what are you put me? I need you. <laughs> that is true. Tony and I happen to be the same size. He's working on making sure that he stays the same size. <laughs> okay, I need you to stand up. Aye, aye, Captain. I almost put a dress on today, and then I said, Liz, 
We're making champs. Good thinking. <laughs> Good thinking. All right, let's put these right here. That's about where they'll sit. All right, guys, so we have Bontex pattern that Denny has cut out. Did you use your... Uh, I used the original Batwing, or uh, shotgun okay. pattern from so our, our pattern pattern. Okay, so we're using the original shotgun pattern from our chap pattern pack that we have. Okay, I'm going to make them about two inches longer than what I've got this pattern. Okay. And I even put on a heel. That's, That's what you good. told me last time. I, I tried to remember all the things. You did well. <laughs> Well, all right. Um, I believe now, these Tibetan well, panels were about two fifty a piece. Michael's asking the cost on them. I believe they're around two fifty a piece, typically. All right. So what are we measuring? I'm measuring around the top of your thigh. Okay. And I've got twenty two inches, but I'm going to make them twenty three. Um, Denny, is this our thickest bond text or is this one of the middle no, weights? No, that's one of the lighter weights. Okay, so it's one of the lighter weights. So I think we carry like 0 0.05 down to 0 0.01 or something along those lines. So this would be one of the lighter weight ones. So it folds better. So then he just measured around my knee. So he measured yeah. around the top of my thigh, kind of crotch area. Yeah, yeah and then right at the, the top knee. of your thigh, right? Yeah. yeah. So those are your measurements. Twenty-three. Yeah, Heath, the thick Bontex is really great for just like flat patterns, so like a holster pattern or a knife sheath or kind of like your small bag patterns, especially for ones, but something that you might need to fold or bend or need some movement, the thinner Bontex is good. Or, um, a lot, you know, Bontex is meant to be a stiffener between two pieces of leather. Um, so depending on how thick you want, whatever product it is that you're making, that can also determine the thickness of Bontex that you use. Yeah. And these two parts, the belt yoke and, and the belt, the back belt itself, I've already done and stamped. Oh, yeah. Look at these panels, guys. They are gorgeous. So we actually discovered that this tool that is right here, we have it, um, but for some reason it is not on the website. So if you would like it, you can call in and order it. It is our S722. So the S722, um, and then Tony and I will work on getting it up. It looks like there was a snafu around, you know, the year 2020. There was a, there was a lot of snafus around the year 2020, <laughs> um, but this one somehow didn't make it onto the website. So it'll be something that we that we look at, but it's a, look at those, look at those diamonds. Yeah. This looks like wood. This looks like legit a wood carved panel. Yeah. yeah. And that's just Herman Oak leather with an oil finish and uh, dark brown antique gel. Okay. Oil finish, dark brown antique gel. Yeah. Okay. Came out beautiful color. It's gorgeous. I wish everything would come. It looks like Coca Cola. Yeah. Like this one, especially with the color variation in the diamond. I love it. But anyway, I've got your measurements right um, here. Michael, I don't think I can answer that right now. So if you'll email me, I can put a gauge on a manila folder and the Bontex and tell you which one is closer. It's probably, I was going to say the lightest weight of our Bontex is probably the closest to a manila folder. I'm trying to decide which is the best use of this leather. And this is just a about a three, three to four ounce, wouldn't you say? We don't even have to guess. Yeah. Sure is. It's exactly three to four ounces. Okay. All right. And originally, the woolies that I had seen, the old actual antique ones, were lined with canvas. Okay. But we're going we're gonna to use leather here. I think this way is the way I'm going to. I'm just going to this piece off. Oh, hey, I undid uh, your little well, break down there. The total cost of a project like this is so 250 and 250 for Woolies. So if we, do, do you think it's going to take both of these panels or do you think you're going to get it out of one panel? Uh, I think it'll take both. Okay. But, but, okay. but see, from here to, to here, 
and from here to here is all I need. So they're they're pretty narrow pieces. So to kind of depending on how big your person is, you might be able to get away with one woolly, um, but it looks like it's probably going to take both of them. So that would be, I mean, if you're buying this specific pair, sometimes we do um, get them in kind of odd lot and get a good deal on them. But if you have to like, you know, go to market and buy Tibetan wool panels or the, um, what is the Angora. Angora sheep, the Angora is probably going to be at least 150 to, to $200 for the full panel. Um, or for a, a full scan, and then if you need two of those, so maybe like five hundred bucks. I'm gonna say for the yeah. for the whole. But but you know, I, and I looked it up on the internet, and uh, didn't the people, you look it up on the internet? I did. I googled it. How's that sound? <laughs> but uh, most of the people that are actually making these these modern day ones mm -hmm. are getting like uh, eighteen hundred and twenty five hundred dollars for. So that's so you'd have about five hundred in it ish. Yeah. Give or take, depending on your materials or what you use, um, and then selling for eighteen to two thousand. Yeah. So or more. Yeah. Or more. The old ones. I saw a pair. Uh, I forget who made them, but they were like sixty five hundred dollars. Oh wow, those are some fancy woolies. Yeah. Well, they were just like what we're making, just like this experiment. <laughs> All right. Now. I was getting there, Dean. I was just calculating in my head. All the things. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Dean. Okay. Now that's this side. So now okay. I've got to cut one for that place. Make sure you flip and have a front and yeah. a back. Yeah, you want a left and a right. For sure. We got plenty of leather here. Okay. Since we do, I'm going to do that other one first because I'm not, my number's written on the other side. <clears throat> Adding two inches, that'll be just about right. Could you hand me one of those dead weights, please? Yes, sir. And I've got a pencil in there somewhere. Here's one. All right. So here's my mark. Your thigh was 23 inches. Keith, you're gonna have a, you're gonna be a real funky person if, if you have two left feet. But then, honestly, I don't think it matters with the chaps, depending on how they're connected to the person. Yeah, you can have two left feet. You just can't have two left legs. If you do, yeah, I think you, you really just have money. the one left <laughs> yeah, leg. You walk in circles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Carrie, welcome in. We are making some woolly chaps today. Denny is working on getting the leather for the backers cut out right now, and we've got some Tibetan wool panels that we are using for our woolies. Marking all your... This is a, the outside of your zipper line on the outside of the leg. Ordinarily, you would either, on a pair of regular shafts, you would either, uh, if you had a zipper and no fringe, you would cut it off about right here, which is would leave you about an inch beyond the zipper. Mm -hmm. If you were making fringe, you would they would probably be about three inches beyond the zipper. But since we're experimenting here, <laughs> we're gonna have the, the fuzz about two inches beyond the zipper. All right. Cause that is, this is purely experimental folks. We're covering our zipper with about two inches of fuzz. That's right, two inches of fuzz. All right. Nice, he, my sister got a, a cricket here last year I think or yeah I think it was just maybe a year ago and we've been cutting some leather she comes in from time to time and she's been doing a couple of things and made some shirt appliques for when we went to Disney and we were those people with matching shirts that was a lot of fun <laughs>
Okay. Now I'm going to get my whiteboard up here and shut this. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start here. And I need a round knife. I'll start. Denny brought all of his tools because he didn't know what he would need. I didn't. This is spare metal, you guys. <laughs> He's so good with that knife, y'all. Hey, Fishman. So, um, thanks for the question about the catalog. We are working to finalize, get everything ready for a digital only release right now. Um, I feel like at this point it's safe to say that hopefully here in the next, um, couple of weeks, we will have that ready and there will be a digital. I mean, it's already downloadable on our website from the one that we, um, produced back in, was it 2021, Tony, that we finished that? Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Yeah, I think so. So we are, we are working on an updated release to, but it will be a digital only release. Um, unfortunately, printing prices have just gotten to the point where we are finding it hard to pull the trigger because every time we price quote it, it goes up by ten to $15,000. The last catalog that I, last catalog that I did Cost about twenty-five thousand dollars to get ten thousand copies, mm -hmm. and the twenty twenty-one one that we did was about sixty-eight thousand dollars for ten thousand copies. This year, when we got a prize, it was about eighty-five thousand for ten thousand copies. So that's a lot of thousands, you guys. It is a lot of thousands. I know it's. It, it isn't our first choice, guys. Trust me, we have been we have been going back and forth on this. But at this at this point in time, it's just um, this is what we're gonna do for right now, and that's that's what we've got. So it's all gonna be linked. We're talking about getting thumb drives that we can be able to send out. Yeah. So that way, if you don't have internet access, like readily readily available. Internet access, exactly. You know, we could send out a thumb drive or something that you could put into a computer and pull it up and still be able to flip through and then give us a call or write us or however it is that you normally place your orders. I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but I cut one leg and I'm flipping it over to make the pattern for the other leg. I feel like if I use the the paper pattern, mm -hmm. I might get off a little bit. Oh, sure. Of course, I might get off a little bit on this. <laughs> but but once you put them on, nobody's going to know. Yeah, I've got a better chance of coming out about right if I use the first leg as pattern for the second. Guys, we're not trying to leave anybody behind. That's not our intention here. Um, it just... it it becomes very difficult to justify the, the price point. So it's, trust me, it's something that we have talked about for a long time and we have gone back and forth many times. Um, but when every time you quote it, it goes up by $20,000, it's, it becomes unreasonable to do it. Somehow we, we even got Denny over here Googling stuff. I'm impressed. <laughs> now, Denny, when you when you and uh, Mary June go on your trips, when you guys go on, on your trips, do you have a, a paper map or do you, we love do you paper use maps. your phones? We mm -hmm. love paper maps, and that's what we go by mostly. 
but sometimes like we're in a, when we're in a city like when we went to to uh St. Louis a while back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we Googled it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, when we do that, when I do that, she says, they're taking you the wrong way. <laughs> you have to say, huh? uh, everybody goes by this. It's okay. Yeah. No, what I say is, do you want me to go your way? <laughs> We've got an appointment here in about 30 minutes. <laughs> No, it's the Google deal is pretty handy in, for us in instances like that. But you know, when like when we're out and about, we're usually there's no cell service. Yeah, so, you're in the country. Yeah, we're on our own. I'm gonna have to show you a trick how to save your map, Denny. You can show me that trick if you want to. Yeah. Save maps, save search. That's okay. My mom also prefers paper catalogs. She's got, or not catalogs, but. Um, she might prefer that. Well, she she probably, she really doesn't like the internet all that much. It's too fast for her. Everything is too fast for her. I go to the bathroom and it's too fast for her. <laughs> <laughs> Would you slow down? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's real funny. Anytime I do anything, I'll be like, oh, I'll go make some tea. And I come back. And she's like, that was so fast. I'm like, I don't know. I just did it. I don't know. Water boiled, poured it in the cups, came back. That was all it took, Mom. <laughs> uh, but she does. She has several uh, paper maps that she likes to plot out. Like when we just got back from Vegas and we went to Camp Verde for the hammer and all that stuff, I had to come back and kind of show her, lay it out, and show her where it was on the map. You know, we went to uh, Big Bend National Park. It wasn't... No, it was two winters ago. <clears throat> And we hunted all over. I mean, we have a, a regular uh, atlas, mm -hmm. you know, a road atlas with all the pages in it. <clears throat> but to get a lot of the small roads and stuff, you, they don't, they aren't on there. <clears throat> They're unplottable. <laughs> They're unplottable. Yes. And we hunted all over that state. Every every place we stopped on the way down, we looked for a Texas map. Could not find one. Yeah. So we went through the whole trip without a map. Got back into Oklahoma. First station I stopped at, we found a Texas map. In Oklahoma. <laughs> in they're Oklahoma, like, we know you're going to need back. this, but they're not going to provide it down there. So right. we'll give it to you here before you go. That's right. And we should have thought of that on the way down. Okay. Now I need to mark my zipper. The night piece the are going back. good, Chevy. I have my next design done. I'm working on it. It's, um... I brought it in yesterday, but I didn't bring it back today. It's like a double helix dotted line. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I'll post a picture at some point. Okay. Marking this zipper on the back side where it will be. That's the top. Keith wants to know, do you roll your maps or do you fold them? She is emphatic to fold them exactly like they're supposed to be. And I'm emphatic is just to wad them up. <laughs> <laughs> I start folding, but they never work out, so they get wadded. But she doesn't let me handle them very often. I think I did, Michael. I think, yeah, I did. I did. It was really awesome. See my marks on the back of this leather, so. Okay. Now, got to make our zipper. All right, so we've got our legs cut out, and you've marked the line for the zipper. That's what we've been doing for the last 10 minutes. While we've been talking about maps. Yeah, we're spearmanning. <laughs> so we've got our 32-inch um, chap zippers here that's a number 10 or maybe even bigger. I don't know. These zippers are so big. Anyways, 32-inch brass zipper. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not going to need quite 32. I'm make them to this length right here. Okay. If you try to make you don't want them to come all the way to the bottom. Okay. You want them to be open a little bit on the bottom, so I'm just going to go to, let's 
see right there. And these are 32s. I probably could have gotten by with a 28 inch zipper, but I really wasn't sure what size okay. I needed. So. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys, I've shown you before, how to pair zippers. I probably already got those off first. Bye, Terry. Be sure to do, Michael. These are zippers that we sell. If you pull up and look at chap zippers, we have them in three or four different links, I think. Side cutters. Thank you. Now I'm just, I'm just going to cut these stops off. Or clip them off. Not not cut them off, but I'm going to bend them so I can take them off and reuse them. Mm. Look at that. Tell you why here in just a minute. I'm going to try, guys. I'm not good at posting things. I think I've made all of like three Instagram posts this year. That's in our way. Sorry. <laughs> my head's in my way. <laughs> you guys just think you're in trouble. Yeah. So you cut it like a half an inch above or something? Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm gonna cement this down and fold it over. Gotcha. I'm leave it finished. So you end. cut the teeth off, but then you leave the tail. Right. Okay. <laughs> Zippers are two way. No, they're just a one way zipper. Yeah. This, this just, it's just a one way zipper. I mean, it opens and closes, but you don't have two pulls on it. So you only have the one pull and then it opens at the end. Yeah, and this has to be a zipper you can open and close. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Now then, to make pairs, I'm going to change this one. The other one I'm going to leave just like it is. What I'm going to do is oh, pull this God. all the way off, then I'm just going to turn it over, put it back on this direction. Now, what I'll have, where's the other one? Since I turned that, that pull over. No, this is just a piece of uh, miscellaneous upholstery leather, guys. Yeah. It's like one of our $35 or $50 sides, something like that. Yeah. Now I've got opposite zippers. That way right. they both zip from the top down. That's Instead right. of one zipping from the top down, the other one zipping from the bottom up. We don't want that. You don't want that. Okay, let me put these back on. Pair of needle nose over there. Man, I don't know if you guys ever get bored enough to troll the internet and look at this but sometimes chris he finds these people that are really really good at um locating play and i'm i'm assuming they have um uh what is that picture memory what is it what is it when you have a photograph yeah memory. photographic memory and um so they can look at a picture somebody will send them a picture and say where is this or they'll be trying to you know find something and and they can look at that picture and within seconds they know where it is in the world. And it'll be like 
some of the most obscure places. And it is crazy to watch those guys. Like, they'll look at a picture for, I think they get, like, three seconds to look at a picture. Yeah. And they'll be able to, like, they know street signs in different parts of the world. They know how different things are labeled. They those know games, diff those games you can play. Yeah. Yeah, I, this whole game, and, like, they show a picture, and then you pick on the world where it is. Yeah, and they can get into, like, blocks sometimes, or even, like, just drill right down to the exact location. It is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in the whole world. So they use, they have Google Maps and they can just, they can just look at a picture for just a couple seconds and then they know exactly where it is in the world. It's like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego, but live and real. And no Carmen San Diego. And no Carmen. <laughs> well, we could call every picture a Carmen. That's okay. fine. It's, it's incredible. I wish I had that kind of memory. I know a bunch of leather facts. I think I do, but I don't remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <coughs> All right, so Denny's getting his zipper set up. Taking them back off. Now I'm going to cut a couple of teeth off of here. Close your little eyes. Okay. I'm glad you did. Mm hmm. Yep. I heard it hit somewhere over there. <laughs> One more time. Okay. Gotta secure your threads. Yeah. Keep it from unraveling. All right. So what what was the mistake that you made? I I well, I'll show you here as soon as I get this on. Okay. I put it down here instead of up here. I uh, cut two teeth off so I had room to put it up. Oh, gotcha. Because now it's a stop. God. Oh yeah. Before it was just there. <laughs> it was just there. <laughs> there. It didn't do much stopping. Make the other one the same. I got to do that one more time as as far as the length goes. Too, I'm too fast. I didn't. I thought you already cut those off. Too busy talking to you guys. Tony's feeling great. I am. No, but we can pretend. He does have to go to Iowa again. No, Illinois. Oh, Illinois. Same thing. <laughs> it's the other cornfields. Yeah. <laughs> it's soy fields. I turned on the noise cancellation so it blocks out my voice. So you'll have to say that, Liz. Oh my goodness, Tony turned on the noise cancellation so it blocks his voice. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Limbs? What are you doing? All right, so this is just a lesson in zipper alterations. That's right. They aren't my corn wheels. <laughs> Chevy, they could never be your cornfields. I'm in the process of making an online laser engraving request form. Well, good for you. Yeah. Tony does have to do some actual work from time to time. Yeah. Just usually when I book him. That's funny. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just doing whatever. <laughs> I'm just about done with this little process, you guys. 
Thank this you. is quite the process. This is something that we may have could have prepped if we knew how long the chaps needed to be. But yeah. it's fine. You guys like to see us alter zippers. Okay. okay. That's done. Now then, let's see here. One, two. Now, does everybody understand that the reason that he had to flip that one side around so he could put the zipper back on the other way is because if he would have kept them both, you need a right and a left. So you want the zipper pulls to be on the outside of both legs. Otherwise, if you would have sewn it in the other side, you would have had one zipper right side up and one zipper upside down. Lock that in for me. Get to it here. Oh, I locked up the back side. There we go. Okay. Okay. That zipper goes to that leg. This zipper goes to this leg. Michael, gray and white are two things that leather does not like to be dyed. You can paint leather gray and white. Um, and there are a couple people that have come up with some... Chevy, actually, did you, I, there was somebody on Instagram a while ago that was experimenting that was making holsters, and I'm, I apologize, I don't remember who it was, but they had come up with a solution that created a really pale black, aka gray, um, and I think it just kind of comes down to diluting, diluting your black and playing with it um, until you get the right tone that you're going for, but there was somebody that did a gray. When Ed Labar was here, you know, he was into the color. Color. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him about white. And everybody says uh, white ink. Oh. So I got some. I was at Hobby Lobby a while back. And I got some. I haven't tried it yet. But by golly, I have some white ink. <laughs> But it would take a lot of it to actually dye a, a full piece of leather. Oh, so, okay. So over here on Twitch, Michael, um, they're saying that Victor, V-I-K-T-O-R, George, has a post about Vinegaroon, um, the, that method of dyeing where he's able to achieve a gray. Oh, yeah, just like thinning down. But nobody, Phoebe's when I very, very first started at Springfield Leather. Back in 2011, um, Phoebe's did sell a white and a gray. But then shortly, I believe the year that I started, it was discontinued. It always separated. It really never worked great. It was kind of more just like a wash. Like you, if you imagine taking, you know, like a wood stain wash and putting it on leather, that's what you got. But anyways, experiment. I'm trying to remember which direction I want this zipper. Probably the right way. Yeah, that's the way I want it. <laughs> you gotta, when you're doing experiments, you guys, you've got to think about things. Yeah, zippers are hard. Unless it's like kind of the straightforward and like this goes in a bag top and it goes bloop. I think this is what I want. Time to tape again. Yeah. Did you make a lot of chaps when you were in your saddle company? I made a lot, but it's been a while since I've made a lot. I made those with you, and I made the pattern, but as far as on a regular basis, it's been a while. Yeah, chaps have always been... A Pretty good business in the saddle shop. Yeah. Do people like to order some chaps when they order a saddle? Well, no, you sell a lot more chaps than you do saddles. Okay. There's a lot of show people. They're cheaper than a saddle. Sure, for sure. <laughs> you can accessorize a little yeah. bit more with right. the chaps. Right, right. 
ships. Oh, and then Michael, it looks like we have another suggestion over on Twitch. Um, they said, look at early road agent leather holster videos. Early road agent leather holsters for possible gray options. The Wyoming Velcro chap. I've never heard of a Wyoming Velcro chap. Educate us, Electrodyne. Hold this little tab over. Oh, right. let me get it overhead. There we go. So we folded the tab that you left up here. We yeah. folded it back on itself. Yeah. That way, when I put this down, what I want, I taped the wrong side, you guys. You want me to retape this side for you? Please. Just kidding. That's the leather on this side, and I need to hold on to that. We had another suggestion that said, um, they fill up their airbrush with black dye, like the, the airbrush tank with black dye, and then they pour it all out, and then they fill it up with denatured alcohol, and that seems to be the right solution, or the right um, amount, oh, the right concoction is the word that they used, and then a couple of coats of that. Yeah. I'm sure glad we didn't try to glue this. Yeah, I hope this is right. Oh, yeah. Is Use good? glue zippers, and I always used to before I discovered this tape. This sure makes it easier. All right, zipper number one. Eugene yeah. says Velcro chaps is a dirty off-color joke in Wyoming. It's gotcha. A, it's a what? It's a dirty off-color joke in Wyoming. <laughs> you guys try to do to me out there. Hey, Wayne. Um, okay, so Denny is working just on the edge here. There we go. We can see that now. So you're just placing the teeth of the zipper about the head's width away from the edge of the leather. Denny, have you ever used the Rit fabric color on leather? I, I, I've heard of it before. I've never done it personally. No, it, my thought is it probably wouldn't be very durable. It would fade over time. Okay. Uh, that's just my thought. Because I don't know for sure. Oh, no, we have to do this again. Yeah, but I've already got the other one taped. <laughs> but I've got I've to mark my pattern.
These spirit myths take time, you guys. <laughs> Oh, we do have to do it again. Oh, do we need to retake it? Tape's on the wrong side, yeah. Standing to W Leather said, I thought about making woolies once. Might still do it someday instead of freezing my butt off. I don't actually know if they cover your butt. <laughs> no, but they cover your thighs. <laughs> you know, the, and your thighs and your, the front of your leg is the most exposed part. Mm -hmm. Right now. And then, so you make the woolies and then you use your leftover woolly to make a little seat cover and you put it in your saddle and then you could sit on the shearling and help keep your butt warm. The cold migrates, Liz. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys were dealing with snow all, all not all that long ago. You can do one and I'll do one. On this side? Yes, on, okay. on this side. Uh, let me see here. Did you? Did you nope. flip it over on the other side? Okay. Yep, yeah, that side. Okay. This is confusing. <laughs> we want to watch Denny struggle. Give him a zipper. You know, every once in a while, we really we we have to watch you. We have to watch you struggle, Denny, because everything <laughs> seems to just be too easy for you. <laughs> So, oh no, I struggle <laughs> constantly, you guys. Uh, they know that, they watch us. <laughs> what was your favorite pair of chaps that you made when you were doing that? Well, did you have, did you make any fun ones? Yeah, I made I made several rodeo shafts, which I mean, you talk about colorful; those people really want them. Mm -hmm. Probably the most interesting pair of shafts I ever made was for a stripper, though. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she kept coming back. No, they need to be tighter. They need to be tighter. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Did you put that on right? I hope so. That's the bottom? That's right? That's the top. Okay. Yeah. So they unzip at the top and then they zip and the zipper. Yes. That way. Oh, when it's closed, the zipper's at the unzip bottom. unzip while you're. Correct. Okay. Carousing around. You don't want them unzipping up your leg, so you zip it up. Yeah. To the top and then you unzip it down. No. Are you un. You you zip them closed down. That's closed. Right. Oh, okay. Unzip. Because your zipper would have a tendency to work its way open. Gotcha. Okay. We'll get there. Zippers are hard. Good gracious. I wasn't ready for this today. This feels like a Monday. <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> it's <Denny's> <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, Missouri might be humid, but rarely are we really cold for any significant length of time. So I can't really, can't complain too much about that. Yeah. Plus, every time I go to a dry climate, my nose starts to bleed, and that's no fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I need to stitch these on. And Anderson did something to the machine this morning, so I've got to see Stinkin if Stinking Anderson. Stinking kid. <laughs> Let me see how they do. Kid didn't do bad. <laughs> he put he put a different motor on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Had we worn the motor out? No, but he said this one has a brake and the other one didn't have a brake on it. I guess. Did he change it out to one of the? He took the, the one off of that class three that we. That they stored in the back mm -hmm. and put on here. All right. Ooh, did you ever make a shearling saddle? I don't know how. Like on the top side? I made some pads, yes. Mm -hmm. Same pad? Yes. You kind of want those to be replaceable and removable, yeah. right? I made them for motorcycles more than I made them for saddle seats, though. Oh, sure. Yeah, we have had a ton of people. I mean, I remember both you and I, when we worked on retail, that was a, a pretty big request. We'd had those motorcycle riders come through. Yeah. There's a lot of people that come through here. We've got Route 66, you know, that goes through town. Um, supposedly, we're the birthplace of Route 66. It's all very exciting. Supposedly. Supposedly. Have you not seen? We have all the things. It's have a big you deal. Seen the telegram. The telegram. Oh. I don't think wow. so. So in any case, we have a lot of car shows. Plus, we just have a lot of people that come through that are doing the Route 66 tour, and so we'll get those those motorcyclists. They've they're, they've gotten about halfway through their tour and their butt starts to hurt. And so they'll come in and buy a shearling to finish it out. Yeah, they'll have it. <laughs> they'll have their motorcycle shipped over here or their car shipped over here to drive. Mm -hmm. to yeah, when I was working at Walgreens, I met a lot of people because we were literally, the, the Walgreens that I worked at, we sat on the Route 66 road. Yeah. And so there was a lot of people that would come through and they were stopping to use the bathroom, buy snacks, whatever it was. And so I talked to, there's a ton of Europeans that came over. To drive Route 66, it's a thing. Pretty close. <laughs> it's just the second. <laughs> just the yeah, second job. The other one I was at for so. six days. <laughs> it was five years. I was there for five years. At the old Walgreens? At the old Walgreens. Oh my. She was at the at the soda fountain table, you know where they have a soda fountain that you you can order? Yeah, that's not a thing. <laughs> it, okay, it was a thing. Denny, you remember the soda fountain yes, store, right? Yes, yeah, I do. We called it the drug store in Jensen. Well, I mean, are you out of it? Yeah, we don't have any of those here in Springfield. How do you know? Because I've been at every single Walgreens in Springfield. Because oh. I remodeled all of them at one point. <laughs> And you're talented. It was fun. Denny's talented. Look, he's sewing that he's sewing that zipper, you can't even see it. I can feel it though. <laughs> this outside zipper. You can, your foot goes right up against the, the zipper and it's perfect. I'm saying that. I'm gonna turn that zipper to not only is it the largest Bass Pro, it is the original in the birthplace. It's the granddaddy of them all. That's right. We got Johnny Morris in this, like, this is his stomping ground. 
I will I do love our Bass Pro. Like, I don't go there very often, but when I do, it's always impressive to, to walk around and just to see all the detail that they put in everywhere. When it's ever, like... Always, always, yeah. Always mm hmm I love the little checkout section where it looks like you're under the water. I just think that's so fun. There's, like, boat bottoms that you look up at and little fish swimming around and turtle feed and... I just love it. I think it's really cool. There's the old um, museum of what the old Brown Derby, what well, Bass Derby looks like in the Brown Derby. Yep. And then the NASCARs that they sponsored. And then the. You know what? No, uh -huh. what? You didn't mess up, did you? Well, it's still going to work, but I usually put the, the pole on the inside of the leg. That's why mm. I was so confused. Mm. Oh, that was the original fish. They're just robots. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Michael asked, because of the weight of the shearling, do you think a double stitch line would be appropriate in this situation? No. Not appropriate. If you're making more holes, the more stitch holes you make, the more perforations you make. So as far as strength goes, the more is not better. Less is more. You know, those... The deal used to be, oh yeah, there was a double stitch. You know, that's really strong. But actually, we were weakening the left and right. And we can another set of stitch holes in it. Plus the fact that the term, everybody thinks it was double stitched, but it was doubled and stitched. Oh. Which means it was lined and stitched. Mm hmm. And honestly, you're not really going to see much of what we're doing right now because that wool is going to cover most of it and then the rest of it's going to be inside your leg. Yeah. I think that's going to be for Friday. Yes. Yeah, we're going to call it after we finish installing the zippers. Yeah. <laughs> If hand sewing them, would one need to use a thicker thread? I mean, typically when you're hand, like you could use, uh, what do you got over there, 207? This is uh, 138. 138. I, you can hand sew with machine thread, but it's curly and it's not waxed, and so it doesn't hold as well when you're sewing. And so typically with your hand stitching threads, they are heavier than machine threads just in general, unless you specifically buy lighter weight ones. Um and so that just kind of comes with the territory of hand stitching, is that you're going to have a heavier thread. Chevy says, Tony, that the stream feels incomplete without Tony singing Wooly Bully for us. Um, bummer. Guess it's going to be incomplete. Yep, because the sound deadening apparatus is in effect. Apparatus? <laughs> Whatever you did. <laughs> All right. Okay. We will finish this Friday. We've got zippers in. And while I'm away. Mm-hmm. I will make a liner for this back belt. Okay. And probably stitch it on. So these are still just the patterns from our shotgun yes. chap patterns. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going to line. He's got this cut and tooled, obviously. So we're going to line it. Yeah. Going to line it. I've already made the front belt and it's just two pieces of leather, you know. And now when you do the woolly, I'm assuming it kind of tucks up under this a little bit so that you 
Yes, yes, these will come out over the... Where is the bully? Okay, maybe we'll throw it like this. So, oops, as I throw everything else on the ground. Yeah, this will come up like that and the woolly will be out over it. So we're gonna kinda tuck it like that. Yeah. <sighs> That's gonna look so good. You picked a good leather too, it matches the under lights. I, I <laughs> agonized over that. The low <laughs> yeah. The low lights here in the in the woolly. But but see the it'll just come to here. Mm hmm The wool skin or the woolly stuff. But then it'll come all the way out to this edge. And I think I'm going to have to stitch this edge upside down. Probably both edges upside down. Oh, probably. Yeah. You know what, though? We're probably going to have enough left over of each of these woolies that we can make some cute purses with some woolly tops on them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, will. we will. Because. Or we could use some of it for when we do our, our boot anklets. We could do some woolly boot anklets. People could put some shearling around their shoes. we're going to use something like that. Uh, Michael says, don't forget to apply your anti-burr spray. I wish there was a thing. He said, you yeah. take one walk through the Ozarks and you well, won't have any woolly left. They'll just be covered in burrs. But see, the, the time of year that you'd be wearing these, hopefully the burrs are all gone in the horse's tail. The horses will already have collected them. <laughs> and people that have horses in burr country will know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so Heath had one more question. He asked, is there, a, is there a system with sewing machine thread? Yes. So it starts, like, we start selling thread about size 46, which I think is about the heaviest that you'll get. Like, if you go to a fabric store, that's probably about the thickness of their, like, heavy coat thread that you'll get. So size 46, and then you have um, 69... Um, sometimes you'll get a 92 in there. Typically, that's not a size that we carry, but you'll have, so 46, 69, 138, 207, 277, 346, and then there is a 406, I think yeah. is a 406 is the heaviest. I don't think we have any thread that is a 406 here in house. That is a really thick machine thread um, that we don't typically carry. But yeah, so the bigger the number, the heavier the thread, and then uh, same with needles, the bigger the number, the bigger the needle. Yeah. Um, it's wire when you start going the opposite direction. The larger the number in wire, the smaller the gauge. Yeah, that's right. So, that's right. <laughs> in any case, that's what we got. So, all righty, guys, we will be back on Friday. Hopefully, we'll be able to get these all finished up. But if not, we will scoot around our videos next week, and we'll be back with them on Wednesday. But hopefully, we'll be able to get it all figured out on Friday. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, hopefully, I'm going to have it where we can finish them up. So I'm going to do some stuff on the sly, you guys. And he'll you tell us about you it. You won't see me. Yeah, you'll hear the whole story. <laughs> All righty. Well, everybody have a great rest of your day. We will be here tomorrow for live shopping at 2 p.m. Central Time. So um, don't forget about that. Tell your friends. Join the party. It's a good time. And uh, then we'll be back on Friday. Bye. Bye.